get the oh 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 to the roof to the roof To start today's video, we find ourselves at Horseshoe Island Camp way up north in Matashawan, Ontario, Canada. I have a full day ahead of me, but first I want to show you around this beautiful and peaceful island camp. After the tour, I'll make my way to the pretty little town of Kirkland Lake, which we'll stay at all day, eating great food and rearranging the stealth camper because of a door malfunction. If this stealth camping food adventure sounds like an exciting video that you want to watch, then grab something to eat, sit back, and enjoy this video. Hey guys, uh, I've been way up north in Ontario. I believe this lake is called Mistinicon, and it is part of the Montreal River. And I've been helping Carl with his fishing show called Extreme Angler TV, and uh, doing some camera work for him. He needed help on this trip. We were on, actually on an island no electricity uh we have actually gas lights in the building which is kind of neat kind of gives off that really neat um rustic way out in the middle of nowhere kind of feel when it's nighttime and you're using those lights as lighting um so i brought i brought my jackeries for to charge batteries and things but we're all packed up and ready to go. Carl had uh, an amazing fishing experience here. This is called Horseshoe Island Camp. Uh, let me just take you quickly through the um, cabin before we uh, head out. Uh, the pontoon boat's coming to pick up all of our stuff. There's Carl. Say hi, Carl. Hi, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So when we first got here, it was like really hot and humid and we had to unload our vehicles onto the dock, wait for the pontoon boat to come pick us up, load everything onto the pontoon boat, drive over here for about 10, 15 minutes, and then unload onto the dock and then bring everything up here. We were like soaked, sweat, sweaty soaked. But this is the uh, cabin, beautiful. Beautiful. This is the back side of the island, and there's I think about I'm I guess I my guess would be about eight cabins, all pretty large size cabins. Uh, this cabin here is a two bedroom. They're probably all two bedroom, um, but they have this mosquito net thing, and uh, we did some barbecuing. This was cabin eleven. Uh, the fridge was run off propane and that was kind of handy. Here are those lights I was telling you about. And so you just turn the gas on, put your lighter up here. Don't touch the, the thingy in there. And uh, it just lights up and illuminates this room. Uh, there's one over there and there's one in the bathroom. Not sure why they don't have them in the bedrooms, but they don't. So if you ever come here, bring your own flashlights for nighttime in the bedrooms. Uh, all the stuff you need to cook, big cast iron frying pan, which is good, gas stove, which was kind of fun to use. Very nice sitting area. This is obviously your dining area, either in or outside. Didn't have to do fireplace. It was pretty warm the last three days. Carl slept in here. Again, sorry about the lighting. So you can, I guess each cabin can sleep six people or uh, eight if you had like a couple here and then two singles there. Same with the other room. This was my room. They supply pillows, sheets. You just have to bring your own blankets again. Uh, and then you have your ladder to get up on top of that. And they have a shower, so they do have a pump system, running water. You can't drink the water or brush your teeth with it or anything. It's just not a good idea. So you have your toilet, sink, and that's pretty much it. So that was your tour of cabin 11. I'll just quickly take you over. Sounds like my pontoon boat's coming, so I have to rush. All these cabins are very well kept. They even rent boats, so you don't have to bring your own boat. Carl wanted to have his own boat. 
but that you can just sign out uh, kayaks and paddle boats but they do rent so there's the gas uh, for the uh, lighting and stove and fridge so they do rent boats with motors I think they have electronics on them they have a fish cleaning hut right here they have a big gathering area fireplace firewood is this in here so the people that own this live here I'm not sure if they live here all year round but they have a very very nice spot so there's one of the original cottages as you can tell they've expanded over the years supply hut there's like a shop store in there uh, they have some minimal supplies they did a really really good job at this camp That's where they put all the batteries. Well, I guess that's where they have their bait. This is their bait, bait house. Look at all the minnows. Oh boy. Somebody's going to catch something today with those. There's a great shot of the main cabin. And I'm guessing they either live here all year long or they just come up through the summer months and uh, rent out to people like uh, Carl and you. Horseshoe Island Camp. All right, let's get over to the pontoon boat before Carl has to load up all by himself. Our ride is here. Time to load up. The bottom of stuff, big, like, you know, too much bait. Try to grab those stuff, I don't want to hurt them. Just snap the braid. It's like, oh, well. No, that's What kind of dog is that again? That's a Scottish Terrier. Scottish Terrier. That is our Scotty. Good dog. Bye. Good trip. <laughs> Had a great time, sir. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. You know, we can't do anything about the weather, but no. But we had the three days we had were like perfect. Obviously, you caught lots of fish. So, do you guys live up here all year round, or uh, only six months? Six months from what month to what month? Uh, from May till uh, uh, mid October. Okay. And then you have a house somewhere? <laughs> we uh, live in Sudbury. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got a very nice uh, island. Oh, okay. And how long have you had it? Well, we've had it for five years, uh, but my aunt and uncle had it for 43 years. Holy cow. So it's been passed down. So it's been passed down. Very cool. Yeah. That's awesome. And then the, there was an owner before that, and he had it for, I want to say since the 50s. Wow. So. When, when was this established then? The actual first building that went up? Um, I would sometime in the, in the 50s for sure. 50s. Um, and actually, four of the original cottages are there. The red yeah, ones. Yeah, I could tell which ones. <laughs> are uh, the original cabins. Yeah. Of course, now they've been a little bit monitorized because they actually have bathrooms. They didn't used to have wooden stoves. Oh, okay. So it was no heat. No, no heat. Propane, no propane. Uh, And that will be, um, uh, <laughs> no, I just looking for the luggage. <laughs> More Thanks, Ian. Things too, okay. Yep. Yeah. See you, Carl. It's a blast okay. once again. Yes. Carl is out of here. My next destination is a little town I have never, ever been to before. I've heard of it, it's called Kirkland Lake, and it is on the way to a town my dad lived in for many years called Du Parquet in Quebec, and I wanna go visit that. I've never seen where my dad grew up. So uh, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna let Carl get ahead of me because the road between here and the highway is just really, really dusty, as you can tell. I am dusty rusty right now. Check that out. It is so filthy. So we'll try and find a car wash. We'll get that cleaned up. Uh, the other thing I wanna do when we get to Kirkland Lake is reorganize the van. Cause like I said, for some reason, the door on the driver's side doesn't work anymore. 
I can't even like manually open it. If I could manually open it, I'd, I'd be fine with that. But uh, you can't manually open it. You can't do it with the clicker. But the, this this side still works, which is great. It almost didn't work for a second. I'm like, what is going on? So I'm just going to uh, flip everything the other way. Bike on this side, bed on that side, so I can just get things in and out, get myself in and out. There'll be so much, oh, mosquito just went in. Did you see that? Come on, why doesn't it work first time? Jeez, Rusty is falling apart. Got a few more jobs to do, Rusty, before we, uh, yeah, let's get to Kirkland Lake and then reorganize. Oh, we need gas too. I am like right on empty. At least that's clean. Passing through Metachuan again. And there's a gas station, luckily, just up ahead. Check out this gas station. <laughs> Dollar sixty-five. It's about thirty cents more up here than it is down where I live. Regular gas. Nice. So this is interesting. You have to actually go in here, put your credit card in, pay for your gas beforehand, begin fueling. again. To my bank there and uh I've, last couple days swipe my visa i'll work at this place not work at this place so i just wanted to go in there and make sure my visa was still okay and he says if it continues to happen then maybe there's something wrong with the magnetic thing on the back but we're in kirkland it's about 10 000, kirkland lake uh and it's about 10,000 people live in this town and while i was in there i asked the uh uh the tellers there was three tellers in there nobody else i'm like this and it's a huge bank it used to be a bowling alley apparently and uh they said there's two spots i, I possibly need to check out for food because i'm like well, who what are your favorite restaurants here and they said the fed restaurant or give me one restaurant and i think the fed is a sit down give me one is more of a takeout kind of joint so let's go for a little drive around see what's around this town and then uh, we'll grab something to eat it's a pretty little town it reminds me of another town called fenland falls so it's it's a big enough town to have um, a canadian tire and i think they even have a mcdonald's <laughs> you know your town's big when they and they can have a Tim Hortons and McDonald's in the same town. I think they have a McDonald's. Let's just take a peek. Hopefully we're gonna find these two restaurants. Well, here's a food truck, but it's closed. Yeah, a lot of food trucks I've discovered are closed on a Monday because they're open on the weekend kind of thing. Oh, uh, it looks like they, it looks like that place up there used to be a KFC. And there's the Tim Hortons. Every town's got to have a Tim Hortons up here in Canada. Let's see what kind of pretty little houses are in this neighborhood. Some of these houses are pretty nifty. That one to the right there is kind of cool. At the cabin, we didn't have a, like an automatic coffee maker, and uh, Carl or I forgot to bring instant coffee, so I haven't had coffee in two days three days 
and uh, that Tim Hortons reminded me and that's why I actually had a headache this morning and uh, so but we'll try and look for a mom and pop shop just like the uh, Collingwood see if they have like a little coffee shop in town give them a little support and then we'll reorganize this vehicle and then we'll get something to eat maybe all right going back to the downtown area this is probably like the main intersection it seems like it they have a subway in town somewhere apparently There it is. <laughs> so if you're from uh, Kirkland Lake, let me know what the uh, the main four corners is. I think it was that one that we passed. But correct me if I'm wrong. There's their old theater right there. We are open, movies and plays. So off to our right is a Canadian Tire, one of the smaller stores. Uh, and then to uh, our left, straight ahead, is a McDonald's and a Tim Hortons. So this town is big enough to have two Tim Hortons and a McDonald's. So, yeah. Well, I just looked it up, and there is a really cool cafe and bakery. But guess what? It's Monday, and they're closed. I got to stop doing these uh, travel adventure things on a Monday. Hello. Hi, could I get a large uh, coffee, two cream, please? Yeah, the bakery is called Plum Blossom Bakery Cafe. So if any of you guys live in this area or have been to this area, let me know if you've been there and tell me what I missed because it looks freaking awesome. Oh, look at that. Oh, like a nice latte with a little sweet thing on the side. Oh, look, they do, oh, they do cakes. And look at those lattes, artwork, artwork on coffee i love it maybe we could find a car wash too it's probably a good idea thank you thank you thank you have a great day all right people Woo! killer hot killer hot let's get one of our sleeves Ooh, they have a park over there and a fountain all right we got our coffee headache gone so I drove past this place a couple times because I'm looking for a place called Give Me One. And uh, all I saw over here was, um, you know, it looks like a hotel or a motel strip. And at the end, it's Give Me One, W-U-N. So let's go give them a shot. Then I have that sip because I've got a slight, ooh, is that spillage? Did I spill? I think I spilled. I got to clean this mess up. And it's crazy messy. I've got my sleeve on there, one-handed. Let's do this. Oh, definitely coffee smells great with cream, eh? Oh, that's nice. Very nice. I'm going to sit back and enjoy this for a minute. Then we'll get some whatever they sell. I don't know what it is yet. Look at like sandwiches and stuff. Hello. All right, how are you doing? Ooh, P-meal. P-meal, cheeseburger, barbecue baby back. That's your specials for today. What, what's your what's your most ordered thing that people love here? I don't know, it differs every day to be honest. Really, eh? Yeah, one day it's nothing but burgers and wraps, and the next day it's nothing but salads, and then most of it's in. And so it's really all over the top. They got poutine, pickled piglet. I got a Don Air poutine. Angus burgers, wrap it up. Let's do poutine. Please. How long has this place been around? Five years. So just the Don Air fits in today, boss? Please. Oh, wow. So this oh. here. So guess because we're giving me one, right? Right. So I'm playing with words. Right. So we have it in a wrap. 
Then we have it in a salad, a donair salad. Okay. And then we also have it in the pitsin. Okay, so let's do the pitsin. Your, your donair pitsin is just like our medium pitsin with donair meat and then donair sauce on top of it. Done, that's what we want. That's what we're after? Yeah. After. Yeah, ask people at the bank, where should I eat today? And they said here. Perfect. Just to let you know, you have three awesome customers at the bank. Awesome. <laughs> that is great. Um, They're pipping you out. Are you going to be eating it here as well, or are you taking No, I'm going to go. Thank you. No problem. Oh, a little dusting. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin. This is Kevin, everyone. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so a couple festivals of cheese. Ooh. Gonna need a wash and break later. <laughs> oh, got the gravy. Oh yeah. The beef or is it? It's beef with a little secret in there. Uh, but I don't want. I don't want to give it away. No, either. never give your secret away. It keeps people coming back. Absolutely. We got our donair meat, which you say you get it from out east. Oh, and the donair sauce on top. Oh my gosh. I think the donair I've had in the past, they don't put gravy on it. They just do the donair. I've seen but it like that. I think I like it this way. Yes, sir. Yeah. Don't, clo don't close it. We'll wreck it. I, I gotta take a picture. There we go. Awesome. Thanks, Kevin. No problem. You know what? When I was making the picture for that one, because I usually always make the picture for when I post it. Right. Uh, I started eating and I had a hard time to stop eating it. Yeah. It was one of, it's one of those, like, you're not sure creamy garlic goes with gravy and stuff, but it, it really does. All right, thanks very much, buddy. Anytime, man. All right. Thanks for coming in. No problem. All right, guys, back in the car. So it comes to 14 bucks for his poutine, but you can see how much food he put on it. This definitely should be shared with a loved one or a friend. Uh, and then our sales tax, and then I gave him a $3.50 tip. And so it came to $19.32. Totally worth it. When I see people like this and, and uh, you know, he said he was shut down for a while because of COVID. And uh, I, I like to tip tip as high as I can um, just to show my support. Let's go to the steering wheel tray and start eating, shall we? Uh, see, steel, steel, steering wheel's in the wrong spot. Silly Ken. Let's just start the engine. I didn't see... Gee, I usually try to make sure this is the right way. All right, let's get back into the swing of things here. There we go. Let's get out the napkin and placemat. This is going to be above indulgence. And I got my own fork. Oh, it, it messed up a little bit. I'm so glad I got a picture before he shut it because this I knew was going to happen once I opened that up. And again, I think he's the first person I've, like I've had. Poutine uh, from other places that do the donair poutine and uh, a lot of them don't put gravy on it. It's just french fries, the donair meat, and then the donair sauce and that's it. Well, plus the, the uh, cheese curds, of course. So let's go in for a close-up. All right, guys, going in for the extreme close-up of this donair poutine. He said it correctly. It's really hard to say it that way, but it's like not poutine. But it's putzin. So we got that gravy, beef based gravy with a special seasoning or something he said he put in there. And then over here we got our cheese curds. We've got our donair meat flown in specially. And then that donair sauce and those crispy french fries. This looks killer. Yeah, my heart is going to be racing big time if I finish all that. Let's eat. This is one of those things you want to pick up and bring it really close to your mouth. Let's dig up some of that donair meat and sauce. Mmm. It's gonna be interesting because donair sauce is made with like condensed milk and stuff. So it's sweet. And then we've got this gravy, which we'll probably be savory, and of course the salted french fries on top of all that. Oh there we go. There we go. I just want to get more cheese curds. More cheese curds. I'm gonna get like super dirty. Oh, cheese pull. When was the last time we had a cheese pull, ladies and gentlemen? Oh yeah, whip it. Wow. Ah, he's killer. Oh man. I love donair meat. 
Oh yeah, almost another cheese pull. Mm. All those different flavors and textures. Oh yeah, another cheese pull. I think, yeah, we're gonna get a lot of cheese. See how much cheese you put on there? No one has $14. Cheese curds are expensive. And that's why poutine is expensive. Oh my goodness. Get deep in there, buddy. Get deep. Oh. 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 To the roof. To the roof and back again. I don't, I don't think I can turn that, can I? Let's try. It's going to fall off. That big globule of cheese. The heart stopper. That's what you should call it. Kevin, this should be called the heart stopper because I think it's going to stop. Oh my gosh. Can I get that in in one shot? Ooh la la. I can't do it. Here we go. Well done, Kevin. No wonder all the people at the bank said this place first. Hmm. Because it's a great place. Whip in there, grab your food, leave. You can sit inside, you can sit outside. He has a picnic table, he's got some chairs. Super friendly guy. Oh, I love when people always ask permission before I videotape. Some people ask in, in a couple of videos ago, why, don't, why do I always videotape down at my feet when I go into establishments because most of the time people don't want to be videotaped i would imagine and uh i've been i've been questioned in the past what are you doing oh i don't want to be on videotape i won't tell you which places but anyway but when i meet people like kevin here super friendly sure i don't care videotape it and then you get you guys got a nice little personal uh chef review kind of thing going on a little interview mm -hmm. he said sometimes you'll make one of these just to make a picture put up on social media and uh he ended up munching on it and he couldn't stop munching on it because it is that good so people of kirkland lake you're very lucky to have give me one located in your town of ten thousand. Cheese pull after cheese pull after cheese pull. A few more bites, I'm gonna have to take a nap. Craziness. This concoction is so crazy, I'm gonna have to do a one o'clock in the morning shout out bite to all you amazing men and women out there who would love to watch my videos at one o'clock in the morning. We don't know why you do, but you do. This bite is just for you, cheers. Mm. so good came over to canadian tire to uh just convert my van over rearrange everything so it fits better and i can use that side door over there so uh i just want to finish this coffee see that shouldn't get dusty plus the door was resting against it and it got damaged this should not be coming in so the seal isn't good So got all my stuff out, getting ready to move everything over. I need to move that carpet over. But one of the things I did to stop the bed from sliding forward when you braked, uh, I put this there and that stopped it. But I don't have a square. This is called a Robinson red head. Um, so I don't have a Robinson. So um, I think I'll be able to pull the carpet out 
and roll it up for now and then put the bed in that spot and then I'll go and buy one of those multi um, screwdrivers. One of the things I think I should have in here. I have a very cool tool. This is my Leatherman that Paul bought me many, many years ago. It's been an amazing tool, but that doesn't have a Robinson screwdriver on it. it has everything uh, but a Robinson. So I even tried using the, uh, the grips there to grab the, the top of the screw, but it won't work. So my, the only way we can do this is to pull that carpet out. Uh, I can try to get this door open. If I grab this handle, the other handle, at the same time, I have to open the window uh, and then push the lock forward. The lock won't stay forward. Uh, if I pull, if I do all three things at the same time, it's sometimes open. Let's give it a shot. Well, that's not working. Now I'm hot. It's funny, the looks I'm getting is like, I'm homeless. All done, flip flop. So uh, I'm not trying to keep everything clear from that area because we want to uh, go and get a screwdriver. Like this door is acting up too. Jeez. So we'll get a, a proper screwdriver and we'll keep that in this vehicle. And uh, yeah, that'd be great. We're also gonna need some air in our tires because that's definitely a little, little bit bulgy. Kind of looking for them. Okay, it's only 12 bucks instead of 25. Love it. How are you? All right, how are you doing? Good. And that's it? That's it, thank you. Let's move that piece of wood quickly and then we'll go wash the car. As organized as I will ever be. Let's go wash this beast. No oil changing. Got it. Three bucks. Let's do it. Three dollars. We just want to rinse, right? All done. Now I just need a um, air for my tires. And unfortunately there's no like free air. I was joking with the guys in there because I'm asking, like is there like a gas station that's like a free air pump? Remember when we were kids, you go fill up your air, your bicycle tires, just go there and you fill it up and leave. It's free air. Now they charge you money for air, for air so uh they told me a few places uh cost a buck and i happen to have one more dollar on me 
The rest is all in a small change. If it takes smaller change, I'm gonna get rid of some of my small change. Found one of the air pumps at Circle K, and guess what? It is out of order, so we gotta look for another one. Let's hope Essos isn't out of order. Two dollars. Two dollars. Feels better, cars clean, tires have pressure back in them. And uh, let's do a little walk around the town and enjoy this beautiful little spot. Centennial looks too good to pass up. I think I'll try your mac and cheese bites, please. Okay. You want dipping sauce? I'm thinking mac and cheese ketchup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to have ketchup on mac and cheese. Do you guys have milkshakes too? Or? Yeah. Okay. I think I'll do a chocolate shake with that, please. Chocolate shake? Pretty, please. How long have you guys been here? Um, I bought this last year. Okay. So this is my second summer. Well, congratulations. Hope you do well. This is my first time in town, so. Yeah. And you're open all year round, or are you only open for season? Yeah. Smile, you're on camera. So why is it called Kirkland Lake when there's no lake around here called Kirkland? Um, I'll eat it here, thank you. I don't know the story. It's gone? There used to be a lake here? I think so. Oh, so they built the town over an old lake. I hope it doesn't fill in. And you go, <laughs> this next street over, you go down, and you go up by the curling club. I think that used to be the lake there too. Okay. I think that's what they said. I've lived here all my life, and I think that's what. It is. <laughs> well, I'm glad I talked to somebody who's lived their whole life here. Thank you, ladies. You're welcome. Looks good. All right, check it out. Mac and cheese here at Scooter's, brand new. Oh yeah. Let's do a bit of this milkshake first. Let's do one of these bites right here. You definitely got to dip it in ketchup. <laughs> Very nice and creamy inside. Very hot. Whoa. Mm. Great little snack. They were that good. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Milkshake was better. <laughs> Take care, right? Thank you. Looks like it's uh, 7.30. I am still in Kirkland Lake. Uh, as you can see, I'm out of Tim Hortons editing uh, my video here. And I looked at the map and it turns out because I want to go to Quebec, it's about an hour and maybe an hour to two hours to my destination. I think we're going to go for it. I'm going to pack up and get out of here. Well, it was nice knowing you, Kirkland Lake. Thanks for all your hospitality, but we're off. Thanks to Tim Hortons too. Let me work in their restaurant for a few hours. Before we get too far out of town, check it out. It's a gold mine. Obviously, probably not in any service. 
but uh, maybe back in the day, free self tours. That is so cool. Anybody seen a gold mine before? That's my first one. Well, that was very cool. But we're gonna get to the next town before it gets too dark. And then set up our stealth camp, and go to bed. gentlemen I made it to Quebec this is a little town just over the border and uh, we're at a Walmart of course we've got the uh, RV area over here and so it looks like we're allowed to park nice safe and sound but uh, I guess we don't have to really go stealth tonight we'll just park <laughs> just with all the other campers park beside all the big guys I wonder if this person's part of the group or oh that one's for sale yeah well this is where we're going to park for the night again I can't remember what town we're in but uh, yeah this is Quebec well guys, thanks for hanging out with me uh, today. I had a lot of fun. Come on. We're having a little bit of issue with that one as well, aren't we? All right, I'm gonna set up my stealth camper and then we're gonna hit the hay. So we'll see you tomorrow, guys. Again, thanks for hanging out with me.